Hello there, Cancers. I'm going to go into your reading and um, I'm using the same spread. This is basically, you know, the 12 houses of NATO astrology. And it's going to pertain to, you know, 12 sectors of your life, 12 houses, and what the energies um, that are coming up for you regarding, you know, that aspect of your life, okay? So let's get to it. Um, the first card that comes out, and this is a very interesting combination. We have the lovers as well as the two of cups. And I actually want to pull out the um, a clarifier for the first card before we move on ahead so that I have a little bit of a... <clears throat> energy to work with here okay so let's talk about your first house first of all we have the lovers and the lovers is a major major decision like a, a crossroads major turning point a major choice that i feel you have had to make in january and a lot of it has to pertain to you know where am i living like living spaces moving from one location to the next taking on a lot more responsibilities maybe even a change in position where you might have um, more responsibilities a slightly better pay so i feel like a lot of you are having made a very very major decision okay others of you are really thinking about you know communicating uh, which is basically, you know, communicating in a, a, a way where you feel like, do I disclose or divulge all the information or do I hold something back? And then for others of you, it relates once again to a situation that you have left behind in the past. But for some reason, there's still some contact or something that is not allowing uh, one or both parties to let go of one another. So this might even be a lover like literally a person you were romantically involved with. But I feel a lot of you are um, have decided to take on a, a lot of responsibilities. And so you're coming into this month trying to find your bearing and trying to adjust to this new environment. And you're also trying to adjust to make sure that um, you are properly taking care of all of your responsibilities so like i feel i feel a little bit of a work life balance that need work life personal life balance work life home life balance that needs to be sorted out coming okay um first of all i'm going to say as well this is a card that indicates you know third party interfering in a relationship and so if you have dealt with that, I feel like the energy is going to start to clear up. So not to worry. I feel that it is going to clear up for you. Okay. So the first house deals with our rising sign. So I would urge those of you who are watching this for your sun sign, watch the sign for your rising sign as well. And then your moon sign. Okay. So sun rising and then the moon sign. The second house deals with work. And it also deals with, uh, it, I'm sorry, finances, and it also deals with values. So in terms of your financial situation, they're saying that there's going to be a lot of contracts signed, even maybe a new job that's made available for you as a result. And, you know, you're signing contract in order to start new work. You're signing contract in terms of like um, finding ways to make new, like a new source of income or even signing something. Um, in order to either purchase something where a huge amount of your money will be devoted to that. So for example, I see some of you are looking at options career wise, and you might be, you know, uh, coming in for interviews, signing on the dotted line and thinking about where you are going to start your next job. Others of you, I feel might have left behind a job that might have been problematic. And so you're moving forward, trying to figure out how you are supposed to, where you're supposed to look for the new job. And then others, it seems almost as if financially you are definitely linked up with another person somehow, some way. Um, so for example, if you have recently engaged, have been engaged to join bank accounts with or even started, you know, like married somebody, I feel that there is something here that indicates financially being linked up here with possibly another water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or this person right here. This can be a mother figure or this can be a fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. So I feel like you are, you know, linked up financially with another person through some type of either business contract or individual type of a contract. It looks good. It looks very, very stable because I feel like it's almost as if you can't freely spend your money the way that you know how, that you want to. 
it, it seems almost like heavily you have to consult another person. So that's what it feels like to me. It feels like the money situation is very stable, but it seems like you don't have free control over how you spend money. And in terms of your value system, I feel like you and a very uh, a partner are very much closely in align with. Okay, so some of you might have uh, had a, a relationship in the past that might have been a little bit turbulent. There was a lot of chemistry, but there might have been lack of compatibility. So this is a, a very good card to get. Okay, it, it basically means new contracts for work as well and money. Um, third house deals with communication. It also deals with um, siblings. So in the third house, we have here the Ten of Swords in the reverse position. Um, I feel almost for some of you, it seems almost as if there, there, there is something returning back from the past that might have been very painful. And I feel like you are going to come back to, to interact with that energy, that person. And I do sense that there is a, a, um, almost like a healing that needs to take place. There's almost a, a, like a revelation that needs to happen so that you both can heal from it and that both parties can move on. So there's something here about some situation that was potentially uh, very emotional, like it, it deals with communication. It's a situation where you might not have communicated very clearly or harsh words were being exchanged between people. And this is the month in which it is coming back for you to rectify it, for you to fix it. It doesn't mean to, you know, reconcile, to make sure everything is okay, but it, it basically means that you might have a second chance and second chances, you know, don't really come in life. So you want to take this seriously, communicate in a way where you express yourself and what you mean and what your intentions are. Because I feel like the other person, there there seems to be like a deep, deep wound. So it's almost like one person is too proud to admit something and then the other person might not be very direct. And so there's a, a issues here with ego conflicts. There's issues here with like lack of clarity, okay? So you're having a, a chance to communicate with another person to resolve some deep-rooted conflict that might have happened in the past. And so take this opportunity very seriously because I feel that it is um, very healing for you, okay? It can heal a lot of... Um, it can resolve a lot of issues and it can create a lot of healing for you as well. In terms of your house of siblings, I do feel if harsh words, especially, were exchanged between siblings, be between people that you grew up with, I feel like that might be the person that you're going to do some healing with for this time of the uh, the month. And um, I do sense that it, it has the potential to be quite therapeutic. Um, I'm also saying, seeing here, um, if you have been uh, holding on to something I feel it's time to release it. Let the truth come to light so that healing can happen for all parties, okay? Feelings can, uh, healing can happen. So for example, if you might have been involved with somebody and um, somebody it, like, like um, being, you know, being in a love triangle almost, if you were involved with somebody and then I feel like, you know, if you just let that information come to light, ask for forgiveness, apologize. I feel that's going to be able to help you release some guilt, release some karma. And then additionally, if you have been in a position where you might have been cheated on, okay, and that's not going to apply to all. If you have been cheated on in the past, I do feel that, you know, expressing that forgiveness, getting, letting the other person explain themselves, Asking those questions that have been haunting you, you might act like, oh, I don't care. I don't, it's in the past. No, I don't care. But I feel like some of you are still questioning some things. And some of you that might have been cheated on, I feel almost as if um, it really hurt your self-esteem. It's made you feel almost as if um, I wasn't good enough. So the other person chose somebody else or had somebody else on the side. And I feel like that really affected your ability to to believe that you're lovable, believe that you're enough for another person. So there's going to be a lot of healing that's taking place and, and initiating this conversation. I feel it's going to be really, really good for you. Okay. And especially if you've been dating 
um, on the work front and then things really came to light and it really affected your work environment. I, I do sense that a lot of healing needs to take place so that you can resume your role so that you can move on. Okay. So I, I feel like it can be a really, um, transformative experience if you let it okay don't shut this energy out just communicate get your point across behave you know like if, if you're angry about it you have the right to answers you have the right to you know dig for questions you have the right to you um quench your curiosity if something that happened that really hurt you and then you weren't very clear about you have the right to ask these questions whether or not the other person responds i do feel that they're going to give you uh, a good answer i feel like at least you know tell them you need closure so you can move on tell them you need the truth so that you can finally let it go and release it i feel that can be healing for for you and especially for the other person but i feel more so for you okay fourth house deals with family situation as well as um it, it deals with the mother and let me just say this okay I, I i'm getting very strong energy about mother or father and so i'm gonna mention that if it doesn't come in strongly i do uh, I, I i'm not gonna mention it but it, it's coming through there's so much about family. There's so much about, you know, the, the, the relationships that we form. We are affected heavily by our family members. So let's just talk about this. Um, in terms of your family situation, I feel like there's a lot of people going, coming and going. I feel like you might have even shifted around quite a bit within the, the past year. And I feel like you're feeling very, very restless. You want a place to call home. You want a place to settle down to your environment because you might not be home a lot. Uh, it's very bare minimum. It's very minimalist. It's very survivalist. So that means you might have like a mattress. You might have like a coffee table. But it doesn't feel to me like a home. It feels a little bit sterile and it feels like very minimalist. And, you know, as a water, as a water sign and also one of the most, um, I guess, like the most homebody of all the water signs, especially, I feel that you need a lot of um, comfort and stability in order for you to feel good, in order for you to feel comfortable. And because the fourth house deals with your foundation, I feel some of you are not establishing the appropriate foundation, okay? What I mean by that is I feel that you need to really come to terms with what you need in to make your home environment, your apartment, your room even, um, feel welcoming feel comfortable because it's gonna supposed to act as your haven it's supposed to be the ground uh, provide the grounding energy to keep you still so that you can you can be um so that you can think about things like where you're supposed to go if your home environment is cluttered if your home environment is is minimalist where it's just a, a place for you to come home and crash, sleep for four hours, and then go off to your next adventure, is not fulfilling this deep-rooted emotional need of yours. And so you're gonna need to make your home a haven, a place that you can retreat to. Once that is stabilized as a, as a water sign, once this is stabilized for you, then you can come back to it, retreat to it. When life gets difficult, and then from a very firm foundation, you can then start to branch out and manifest your dreams. So foundationally for a cancer, your home is very, very important. The home that you grew up in, the home that you're creating for yourself, the home that you're living in now, it is really, really vital for you to make it warm, make it feel like a home and to spend more time in it. Because I feel like for the month of February, you're shifting all over the place. And, you know, you might be so exhausted that you come home and you just sleep and uh, you might just have like a mattress and you might think like, oh, I'm not going to stay here long. I'm just going to, you know, buy a mattress. I'm just, it's not going to be permanent. So I feel like you're perpetually thinking to yourself that it's not permanent. I'm not going to invest in furniture. I'm not going to invest in, you know, create making a comfortable environment. But I feel more than anything, that's what you need because it acts as a grounding energy. And once you have that, you're gonna feel rested, you're gonna feel energetically rejuvenated, 
you're going to start to feel as if you're able to manifest. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. In terms of the mother figure, I feel like there's a conflict of interest coming through with the mother. Okay, so your mother might literally be an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Or, so that's sun, moon, or rising. Or your mother, I feel like she might be somebody who's very, very emotionally detached. She might also be somebody who's very, um, who's like coming and going. She might be emotionally like unavailable. She's constantly in and out. Or she might be in a way where she's so independent that she's she's um, she's not you know nurturing that emotional side of you. She you don't feel as if you have a very strong emotional bond with her. I feel like this is indicative of you know a woman because we're talking about the fourth house. This is indicative of a woman who has to do a lot in her life for survival. So her energy is very like uh, directed. She has to take care of certain things. She's zooming about, you know, driving everywhere, dropping off children. It might be a single mother type of energy too. So I feel like some of you are in an environment where you feel almost like there's a little bit of conflict of interest regarding how you deal with her or regarding the way that you both uh, understand things philosophically in terms of how you both uh, navigate life okay so there there's a little bit of um, conflict coming through with the mother figure for this month okay um, the mother indicates your own mother in terms of in-laws and things like that I feel like that's coming through too but I feel more like father-in-laws father-in-law maybe even value system with the in-laws might not be in alignment with yours okay you might be in alignment with a partner in terms of sharing resources but values when it comes to in-laws might be problematic um the fifth house deals with recreation fun and, ex and and opportunities for like creativity and excitement so in terms of the people that you're hanging around with we have here the ten of um pentacles this is kind of like hang rubbing elbows with you know the rich and famous this is what i feel this card represents and i feel like you have a lot of accomplished people in your field that you are hanging out with that you're socializing with so i feel like there's going to be some extravagant um, either dinners, uh, dances, or something quite extravagant, a, a very extravagant venue that you're going to be going to for this month. And I feel that you're going to be rubbing elbows with the rich and famous. So that phrase did come through. What is also made available here with this card is that um, it indicates to me a whole family, like some type of a family business or some type of a family joint venture that is very creative so I, I'm inclined to believe that I feel some of you might be in the brewery business and it might be a family business and then you chip in help out once in a while because you think it's fun and but I feel like everybody's benefiting and there's a lot of prosperity associated with this okay so I'm getting family business I'm getting a lot of um, people who are in the restaurant in industry where the whole family chips in I'm also getting a lot of um, beauty parlors, so nail salons, hair salons, even like massage parlors, or even um, I'm, I'm getting some type of home-based business where everybody chips in, everybody in the family chips in. You chip in whenever you have time. It's a very fun, exciting environment. So I feel like work might be piling on, and then you're coming to you know this side gig as a uh, for fun, for relief, and I feel that you're still making money from it. So it's indicating some type of a family creative thing that you all are doing together. So it could be brewery, restaurant, bar, restaurant, and I'm getting like beauty uh, parlors. Um, okay, so very, very good card. Um, they're saying as well, some of you might be, I don't know why, but I keep seeing like, your home environment might be a, a place where you work from. But it's weird because I'm not seeing the self-employment cards. I feel like your home environment, there might be supplies. There might be a lot of inventory that you're keeping in your home environment. And so you're trying to keep your place. Like it, it, it feels almost as if 
there's a blur of boundaries between the home environment and where you're working. So it feels almost like the home being turned into a factory where you're producing things and selling them and generating money in terms of like a creative project. But it seems almost as if because of it, you might not even have a place that you feel as if you can retreat to. So take care of these two areas. If that sounds familiar for you, um, Cancers, take care of these two areas. Make sure they are worked out because you really need a comfortable home okay you need a comfortable home think of it as the home is your foundation and without a strong foundation you can't start manifesting you can't have things to go your way so you need to have that home and then you can uh, work out of it and then you can start to realize some dreams some aspirations okay so you need that home in terms of your um, sixth house sixth house deals with health and it also deals with work and it also deals with daily activities like your 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 routine um i feel like disruption in the sleep pattern okay with this card this is like the nightmare card staying up very very late uh not having a fixed schedule or even like sleeping whenever we can and then being woken up in the middle of the night so i feel like there's some disruption for you guys in your sleep cycle and i'm feeling very strongly some of you might have young children that are either crying or that have nightmares and so i feel that you're gonna have to stay up to take care of them so younger children uh being a source where you know they they just disrupt your sleep cycle or you're not getting as much sleep as you need and so this is coming through urging you to try to make time to snooze and try to clear up your home environment so that you're able to get rested okay um as it pertains to your work environment this is a situation where there might have been, you know, harsh words exchanged between you and another person. And it seems almost as if you're replaying the incident over and over and over in your head. And, you know, cancers, you are very, very sensitive, very, very sensitive people. Like, um, I feel like cancer and Pisces are very deeply sensitive. When people say uh, hurtful things to you, it's... um it's it's like heartbreaking to to look at your facial expression when people say hurtful things because i feel like your your face like scrunches up and it hurts you on a very very deep emotional level and so i feel almost as if there might have been hurtful things thrown about within between colleagues between bosses between you know friends even at work and i feel like it really it, it was something quite hurtful and you're you're not able to let it go you're not able to make sense of it and so i feel like you're replaying the incident over and over and over and over in your head and so my advice in order to you know lessen the impact of this is a lot of the time so you know i use this analogy a lot but you you're that crab and um a lot of the times, you know, you walk sideways, you see something that you want, but you know, crabs, they, the nature is that they, they kind of like zigzag sideways to get to the object of their, um, intention. And, um, so you have a very indirect approach when it comes to, to things, just whatever you do, you have a very indirect approach. And so they're urging you that, you know, if there's something that needs to be cleared up, get to the bottom of it, clear it up be a little bit more uh, direct okay so i feel like that's gonna be helpful for you to make sense of it because i feel like you're replaying it in your head and everything that happens in our head seems a lot worse than real life it's almost as if it's almost as if i feel like there needs to be a conversation had with another person that really hurt your feelings and so there's opportunities for healing there's opportunity, a lot of opportunities for healing, for situations, for like getting a, a do-over, a second chance here. So I feel that this is something you need to resolve for the month of February, okay? Something that is really, really important for you to resolve. Um, so I mentioned the health, work, and I mentioned the daily activity. Um, the work situation, some of you, I feel like you might not be employed, and you're looking for jobs, and it's really worrisome for you right now. And so you might have like broken off, you know, like um, disbanded a previous work arrangement 
you're trying to find something new and i do feel something's going to be made available for you for this month okay so don't stress out too much uh use this energy harness this energy make it productive by you know doing the job hunt doing the follow-up honing the re your um fixing your resume or honing down your um i, I want to say like rehearsing your you know um your interview skills so i feel sharpening your interview skills i feel like that's going to be really important for you now in terms of your relationship sector we have a very good card so we have the chariot and um, i'm just going to say this this is your card and it's basically telling you that you have full control and whatever you want you need to be a little bit more direct about your your how you go about in achieving it okay so this is a card about you know that green light that go energy and it's also urging you to be very very directed because whatever you are aiming for you're going to be able to get it all right now in terms of your relationship sector this is what i'm feeling i feel almost as if you're looking at another person and they they might look very very different from you right like you might have straight hair, your partner might have curly hair. So it's like very, very mundane things like, you know, a physical appearance, you might be very, very different. Even like upbringing, you might be completely different. But I feel like you both, despite your differences, you both are going to be able to work together in order to achieve a bigger purpose. So the chariot is a very, very good card that signals cooperation between two people in either a romantic relationship or a business association, like a business partnership. So this is a positive card that basically means you have somebody that you have a very strong soul connection with. Um, this is a card about, you know, mutual reception, like seeing eye to eye, agreeing on things. And this card basically means, despite all the differences, two people are still working together in order to move mountains. So I feel like this is a really strong card. That means that you're on the right track. The partner that you're with right now is the right person for you. And if you have any doubts in the past, if you doubted whether or not it's the right person, I feel like this is coming in as confirmation, okay? So if you've had to break up with one relationship in order to get to another or to be with this person i feel that you're living with a, you you're dealing with a lot of guilt i feel like you're dealing with a lot of guilt and so release the guilt release the anguish release the guilt i feel that you're on the right track and sometimes we have to make you know hard decisions in order to get on the right track okay so I feel like your relationship sector looks really good. And I feel like you're with somebody who's very, very verbose. So I feel like they might compliment you very well. So for example, not compliment, but you know, they, the complementarity, like there, there's great complementarity here. So I feel like if you are indirect, this person is very straightforward. If you are more passive, this person is aggressive, like assertive. And I feel like they're, you're very, very different, but together it just works in a really nice way and i feel like you 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 have some you have qualities that the other person is missing and vice versa so this is a really really good union and some of you there might be you know uh distance associated with this as well so you might living be living a distance from each other they might think about coming to visit you and you might think about coming to visit them so i feel like there's great energy it's a very dynamic relationship I feel like it can be very dynamic. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next next card. So in terms of your eighth house, the eighth house deals with joint finances. It basically deals with. Um, so let, let's talk about joint finances first because that's important. Uh, some of you might literally be sharing your financial assets, like um, bank accounts and things like that, with your mother. So that means you might be giving money to, out to her or uh, your mother or a mother figure in your life. So if you are a male, it might be like, you know, the, the mother of your child. If you are a female, you know, and you're dating men, it might be like a, even a, a stepmother or like a in-law. 
So I feel like there's some mother energy here where you are spending a lot of money, sharing money or sharing assets with another person. And then others of you might just be sharing money um, with this person who could be a lover, a wife, or even like a person that you are um, financially like in a business partnership with. So this is showing up here as a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries or Leo. And I feel like some of you are thinking about, you know, there's some things, some type of a union, some type of an agreement, even custody issues, custody agreement as well, where you are, your money is linked up with this person somehow. So you might be court order to, you know, pay out money. But and I feel like it's a verbal agreement between two people. I don't feel like it's a hostile environment. And I feel like this is somebody that is very nurturing, very loving, very caring. She might be a little bit impulsive with money, but I feel that she's generally very fair. You know, like whatever you give, she's only going to take half. So she's very fair. She's very thoughtful. And she, you know, if you're sharing children with each other, she is somebody that will take really, really good care with her children. She's also very resourceful. So even if the money is low, she's able to stretch it. Okay, so you're in good hands here with this uh, person. Can be a he or she, but I feel like um, the energy is coming through so strongly as a female. Um, it could be a he or she. So for, for others of you who might, you know, you might be financially linked up with this person, a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, but it might be a male. But I feel like this is a very caring, nurturing, loving person. They're very resourceful and they're very fair. They care about justice. So they care about right and wrong. They care about justice. So I don't feel that you need to worry. Your money's in good hands, okay? Um, uh, ninth house. Oh, also, going back to this. This also is the house of uh, sex, rebirth, death, regeneration. And so there is this person coming back into your life for some of you. And I feel that you are you have some unfinished business, some unfinished, I, I feel like a soul contract. And so they're coming back in, okay? And I feel like it's a fire sign for many of you. Uh, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, male or female. And then for others, I feel like it might be literally your own mother that you need to resolve some issues with, okay? So that means figuring out, learning something from her. I feel like she's coming back around because there is a soul contract here that hasn't been completed, okay? Um, ninth house deals with higher education, higher travel. So that means far away travel, distance travel. Um, higher education, the sun in the reverse position basically means some of you are thinking about returning back to school and you're, you're kind of like just flirting with the idea. You're not doing anything yet. And I feel like some of you are thinking about returning to school and you're trying to figure out what major. So I feel the main problem is that you're trying to figure out what is the best thing for you to do right now, what piques your interest as well as, um, so I, I feel like a mix here. I, I, I'm sensing that you don't want a job that, that really, you know, emotionally um, fulfills you, but you want more of a, a field or study something or a skill that can generate a lot of money for you. So you might forego um, getting into a, a course of study that is very emotionally rewarding but you actually just want to make money right off the bat. So there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we, we need to make rational decisions in everything that we do. And if finances is something that you're worried about, of course, it makes more sense to go into a course of study or a vocation where you can generate a lot of money right off the bat. So I feel some of you are flirting with this idea. And then for others of you who are in school, students especially, be very, very careful about um, not investing in the you know the proper amount of time to study and also to to write essays is what I'm sensing it's almost as if there's a lot of stress and strain related to passing exams acing exams passing a test or getting a very very good score on a, um, a either a placement test or even some type of, you know, no, not getting good grades. So I feel like there's uh, some paranoia here about, you know, not getting good grades, possibly being on probation at school, or even I'm sensing like um, a lot of you need to meet, need to have like a certain grades in order to not be in the probationary 
period okay so overall you need to focus a lot more on school for this month February is very very vital because I feel like everything is happening so fast and it feels like you have relationship distraction so for those of you who are students be very careful about setting enough time for yourself I feel like last minute things come up your alarm might not uh, ring and you need to take an exam or there's something like that so I feel like you're sleeping a lot you're a little bit tired there's a lot of responsibilities in the household and so you need to take this you need to prioritize your education okay now the tenth house is quite interesting this is actually a very good card for the tenth house this is kind of like you know what career do I want and what jobs are available that will enable me to earn enough experience in order to get my foot in the door regarding that degree um, regarding that that career so I feel a lot of you are doing some major major reassessment here there are some career options I feel for some of you there is um, the healing industry so that is like um, you know medical care so you could even be like um, a benefits analyst for Medicare for example and I feel some of you might be like physical like physicians physician's assistant or even in a nursing uh, environment you might even be working in a hospital but I feel a lot of people in the nursing profession who are reassessing whether or not this is still something that's solid for them and I feel some of you might be um, thinking about returning to school so then you can have a better idea whether or not this is the right track for you so you might be just going through the motions and um, you want something that makes generates a lot of money but I feel like deep down you might not be emotionally fulfilled so you're trying to figure out if it's still a good idea to finish the course or to continue on with something brand new but that is um, it might not pay as well but financial but emotionally it might pan out better for you because you're more emotionally invested in it so some other career fields that I feel would be really good for you I do see like lab technician technical fields such as um, people that take x-rays, people that do toxicology reports, people that are uh, in the you know journalism, communication, economics even. I feel a lot of analysts, data analysts, and I feel a lot of people analyzing samples. So that could be soil samples, that could be like blood samples. Um, so those are good fields that I feel that you should get into if you're thinking and uh, I hope that you know gives you some a better idea uh, as to what might be appropriate I see like a lot of people dealing with a lot of uh, heavy equipment and a lot of like very expensive equipment so I feel like you know toxicologists people who are analyzing even forensic scientists okay so data analysts forensic scientists dealing with some very very heavy um, equipment processing samples of something soil blood even um, yeah, I, I'm seeing like, you know, things being transmitted, being analyzed, and being like broken down into parts, okay? Um, going back to, going to your 11th house, this is friendships and group associations. This is um, considered people that talk a lot, but they don't really follow through, okay? So you have some things here about, you know, your the, the friendship circle that you're keeping, where you might rely on them for something and you're hearing back that they're not able to be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be and so this is a kind of like somebody um, somebody who's not able to uphold their end of the bargain so I feel this there's a little bit of disappointment coming through with friends just keep an eye out for that for this month in the month of February you want to be a little bit careful so if you have some important engagement and it's you're dependent upon somebody to be where they're supposed to be uh, check with them the night before check with them the hour before do both of these things follow up with them three days before two days before a day before and then an hour before because I feel like that holds them accountable because this is an energy about somebody who's not very responsible and uh, they feel almost as if nothing's really urgent they're also very very forgetful so I feel that you need to be a little bit more excessive when it comes to following up with them hey are we still on for Friday do that on Wednesday and then hey are we still on for Friday do that on Thursday and then you know on Thursday an hour before hey just checking I'm gonna be uh, at such and such and we're still on for Friday so you know 
do be a little bit more obsessive about following up with them because I feel that they're they have a tendency to forget or they have a tendency to purposely have selective memory so you want to make sure you cover your bases if you're reliant on them to do something very important for you okay um, 12th house basically indicates something in your environment that you're not aware of something as well in your environment that um, it could be coming from you or from the other person around you so the star basically means um, a lot of healing this is a very very good energy that is basically restoring your faith in yourself your faith in other people and I feel like some of you are able to get like a major major uh, commitment with another person so the other person might be I'm, I'm pulling out the eighth house card because both of these houses are psychic energies okay and the way that they the energy meld together it will give me messages so I feel like some of you are um, able to agree with another person so this is shown up here as a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo and then I feel for others of you there's a lot of mutual love support healing strength between two parties okay so whoever you're with I feel almost as if as if whatever it is that you go through life with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder it could be financial situation it could be health situation it could also be like feeling this sense of like I'm not worthy I feel like there's gonna be a lot of healing coming through with a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo going back to the health thing I feel like a lot of back issues a lot of skeletal back issues knee issues for many of you get these things taken care of okay so this is a, going to be a very life-changing therapeutic month for many of you I feel that some of you might have health issues where you're seeing a um, you know a, a chiropractor or even a therapist that is going to help you restore yourself okay restore balance within yourself so actually I forgot <clears throat> I feel like some of you are moving moving out or moving in with another person that you are romantically linked up with and I feel almost as if in the past you might have been like um, we like each other, but let's th take things slow. Um, or, you know, I'm not ready just yet financially. And I feel like this is the month in which you, in which you brush those uh, excuses, I, I want to say, like those excuses aside. And you're just like, let's go for it. Let's do it. And then, you know, come what may. So I feel like you're a little bit of a risk taker this month, Cancers, which is, um, you know, like it's, it's, it seems to me almost as if you're not somebody that likes to take risk with your environment, your home environment. So if you have your home a certain way, you're and you're comfortable, you're not going to move. And especially like it's you don't take like inviting a person to your home very very lightly. And um and especially you don't invite somebody to live with you permanently and you vice versa will not move in with somebody and live with them uh, permanently. You don't make those decisions lightly and I feel like there's a little bit of a breakthrough this month where you are taking a either taking a relationship to the next level or you are going to be um, either moving in or moving out with another person okay okay so let's go into your reading here I feel like I want to talk about this first so at the center of the spread, this is something that's happening now. We have the Nine of Coins, and we have as well the Four of Swords. The Nine of Coins, this is a self-employment type of a situation. This is somebody that was um, working very, very hard for their hard-earned money. So this is like self-employment gigs. And we have here the Four of Swords. Um, I feel almost as if... There is a lot of financials, um, financial considerations that you are discussing with another part, like with a partner. So it feels almost as if, you know, finances, career and work might have interfered in your relationship. And so you're doing some major, major reassessment, taking stock, discussions with your um, significant other, either a marriage partner or your relationship partner. 
And so you're having these serious work discussions about finances with you know another person. And then for others of you, financially, you might not be in the right space for you to have that excess money, have that excess financial abundance in order to pursue a relationship partner. So I feel like finances really affected your ability to date, your ability to meet people, your ability to really put yourself out there. And what I'm sensing as well is this is going to be something that's coming through in this month. And I also feel as if, you know, financially, if you're not making a lot of money, I feel like it affected your self-esteem. So even though you were looking for love, you might have dated people that were just not right for you. So, it, you know, like when, when our self-esteem is very low, we feel like, oh, I only deserve this much. And so you went for people that you feel might have been on your level. And you know, a lot of we, we do that. We assume that we deserve this person. We assume that we deserve that much. And so I feel like financially, it really affected your, um, your ability to put yourself out there. It affected the way you feel about yourself. And it also affected in terms the people that you attract. And so they're telling you to overcome this. They're telling you this is a major, major obstacle for some of you. And it, it's not allowing the right person to come forward, okay? It's not allowing the right person to be manifested into your environment. In the past, we have here the High Priestess as well as the Four of Cups. The High Priestess in the reverse position, it's almost like knowing something is not good for you and yet still going for it. And the Four of Cups is a situation in this spread. It basically indicates options are available for you but you're still dwelling on something from the past and i feel like there was a situation where you were involved with somebody that either had a lot of secrets and you felt um, or you had a lot of secrets so they're saying like you know in the past you had a lot of options and i feel like you were looking for a specific option and it, it you were waiting on a specific person and miss all of these options and it, it the person never materialized or they never came through and then i feel some of you are involved with a in a situation where there might have been some hidden information something that was left unsaid and i feel like some of you might even have to leave a, an engagement or a marriage situation behind like they're saying broken marriage, broken engagement or something like that. It might have happened within the past four years, okay? Uh, which brings us to the foundation. The foundation, we have the Nine of Swords as well as the Strength card. Both of these things um, coming out like this basically indicates to me uh, overcoming our fears, okay? Tackling, like tackling our fears head on, having those uh, confrontations or even those conversations to allow you to answer, to, to get answers to some questions. So I feel like a lot of things were left unsaid between you and another person. And it's really important for you to be the one to clear the air if you want answers, if you want closure, or if the other person is asking you for answers or closure that you fess up. Okay, so I feel like there's a lot of communication that needs to happen. And there's also um, a lot of like these initiate conversation that th that message came through. I feel like you are very hesitant about doing doing so. And it would be in your best interest to try to resolve it so that you can move on. Crowning this reading, this is something that you're thinking about. We have here the Ten of Coins. You're thinking about, you know, compatibility. You're thinking about settling down and you're thinking about like finding that person that you can start building a life with. So, you know, the, uh, the, the career, the cars, the house, the child, and then the dogs, like you want something in a very systematic manner. Like you want something like, um, in a very organic way. So I feel like you want to build up things from scratch, from the ground up, and you want it to be a very, very specific way. And then others of you, you are in relationship with somebody. And I feel like you're trying to take uh, the relationship to the next level with the four of wands here. So this is an escalation of like marriage, you know, like um, asking somebody, thinking about proposing to somebody or in a relationship with someone, uh, you're in a relationship with someone and you're thinking about proposing, you're thinking thinking about 
matrimony, you're thinking about taking the relationship to the next level. So very, very good card. Coming through in the um, future position, we have here the Nine of Wands as well as the Star. The Nine of Wands is pretty much, you know, this is a card about healing, okay? And this is a, a card about being wounded in the past and not being able to move on. And so I feel like some of you are carrying a chip on your shoulder regarding your financial situation. And your financial situation, I feel like it's not matching up to the life that you want, to the marriage uh, situation that you want. So I feel like on the one hand, you want the relationship, you want the love. But on the other hand, I feel like you are starting. There's a lot of psychic energy coming through in this spread. And it feels almost to me as if the month of February is the month where you are going to have to confront some truths about yourself. So I feel like the whole concept of uh, expectations and reality is coming to light. So it's like you want the house, right? You want the house. You want the stability. You want a person to come home to. But I honestly feel a lot of you are not ready. And you might do things to sabotage the relationship because you're deeply not ready. And if you're not able to confront these things within yourself, you will successfully sabotage the, a really good relationship. Um, especially for those of you who are dealing with air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra as well as fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, I feel like you have a really good partner on your hands and somebody that you really get along with and somebody that, um, that you really like, but I feel that you might self-sabotage because deep down, um, you're, you're not ready. Financially, you're not where you want to be. And there might be pressure to get married. And rather than uh, delaying the conversation, I feel like you feel rushed, you feel pushed, you feel like things are happening beyond your control. And so they're telling you, you know, take a step back, regain control of your life. So if certain areas are you're not happy with, you need to fix those areas before you can invite another person into your life. So I feel like that's what's happening here. And then others of you, you want that ideal, like that marriage, that um, stability, that home, the, the dogs, the kids, you know. And, but I feel like emotionally, you're not ready to, to have that commitment. You're not ready. And I feel like you're starting to confront these issues within yourself. And it's a very uncomfortable process when we have to, you know, admit things to ourselves. So I feel like that's what's happening here. It's, it seems like the cards are showing me, you know, discomfort, are showing me like a lot of spiritual insights are trying to come through for you. But it seems like you're blocking them out. It feels almost as if you're like, I'm overwhelmed. I can't deal with this right now. So there's a little bit of guilt. There's a little bit of like denial as well with the high priestess in the reverse position. So you have some issues that you need to work through here, uh, Cancers. And because the card is showing up here as your card, it basically means you are the one that is in control. And without your go ahead, the, this situation is not moving along anywhere. So you need to make sure that you are okay with it. And you need to make sure that that's what you really want, heart, body, and soul. Because I feel like you're buying time. I feel like you're stalling something because you're not ready. But rather than telling the other person you're not ready, you just buy time and you don't communicate. I feel like that's what's happening here. And then on top of that, I honestly feel some of you are, um, I feel like some of you are thinking about taking a relationship to the next level or it's, it's almost like you're, you're with somebody that you see eye to eye with, but there isn't that chemistry. There isn't that passion. There isn't that love. It, it doesn't feel to me like genuine love. It feels almost like like it's 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 great but it doesn't feel to me like it's the one and you're you're already thinking marriage family because you might be working on a biological clock or you might feel like it's about time and so i would urge you to slowly 
back away from that to get some perspective because I feel like you might be marrying because you feel like oh we've been together for this many years and so we naturally need to get married but I don't feel like you're really in love with that person okay I don't feel that way so cancers you've got some really uh, important things you need to really re-examine and be honest with yourself about when it comes to your love relationships okay and these are not bad things I don't feel sneaky behavior I don't feel you know uh, lying cheating stealing or anything like that but I do sense that there are certain things here that you're 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 refusing to face and the the more we suppress the the more the harder it is going to be when it comes out and we have to address it so don't do that okay don't do that to yourself and don't do that to another person especially so cancers i wish you the best so i feel like whatever you need to do just clear up the air clear up the air with another person be honest okay and vice versa have them be honest with you too so this is a two-way street here i wish you the best take care of yourself bye-bye